Hello, my name is Stephen Thomas and welcome to my channel. In this video, we're going to take a look at how to add an MCP server inside of VS Code. First off, what is an MCP server and why would you want to add one to VS Code to begin with? Well, MCP stands for Model Context Protocol. At its core, it defines a standardized way for AI agents to use tools. Now think of tools as things like performing a web search, sending an email, or like we're going to see in our demo, accessing Azure artifacts. These are all tools that you can define via MCP and provide access to your agents. By setting up an MCP server, we're going to give, in our example, our GitHub Copilot agent full access to these tools, in this case, greatly increasing the capabilities of these agents. So why would you want to use an MCP server inside of VS Code? Well, the reason is simple. It allows you to integrate some of these powerful components that aren't natively built in to GitHub Copilot with your GitHub Copilot right there in your local development environment. MCP servers themselves can take various forms. It could be as simple as an HTTP call if you're exposing an MCP server using Azure Functions. It could be an NXP or a PIP package, or it could even be a Docker container. Now, whichever type you choose, you do have to make sure that you have the necessary prerequisite components installed in your workstation. So for example, you need to have Node.js installed if you're gonna install and use an MPX package. Now, while this video will focus on using the Azure MCP server in VS Code, what we're gonna see here is completely generic. You can follow the same approach to install any MCP server inside of VS Code. And if you wanna explore the hundreds of pre-built MCP servers available to you today, one of the great places to look at is the official GitHub repository. You can find a link to it right below in the comments. That'll take you right there and find easy ways to integrate these different MCP servers in your local VS Code environment. All right, with that said, let's jump right into the code and see how easy it is to set up an MCP server in VS Code. Now let's take a look at how easy it is to add an MCP server in VS Code. Now I've opened my VS Code installation in my local environment. This is just the standard install, not the insider edition. And we do want to make sure we have the latest edition of VS Code. So I'm going to go to help about, and we want to make sure the edition is higher than 1.99. This will ensure that we have the correct agent mode and MCP server support. So I have that. And we also want to make sure we have the right extensions installed. I'm going to go in our extensions and we want to make sure we have the GitHub Copilot installed in this environment. I also have the GitHub Copilot for Azure installed. So we're going to see a little bit different results. Some of the agent calls might actually hit this directly itself. So we have those all installed. And if we want to make sure our MCP server is set up, we can go under settings. And here I can simply look for MCP. And we'll want to make sure that this checkbox is checked. Now it should be checked by default, so you should be good there if you have the latest version of VS Code. To edit and modify and view MCP servers that are installed, we can go to edit settings.json and we can see the MCP servers that are already installed. Um, by default, we do have this Python one to related to time that's going to be installed. And we can also see this doing control shift P and look at MCP servers, list servers, and this will tell us what servers we have installed here. Now, if we want to install servers, we can do it directly from here, clicking add server. And here's where we have the few different options that we talked about earlier, the HTTP and NPM, the PIP package, and then the Docker image. Now you will have to make sure you have those prerequisites installed. So for example, if I click and start this MCP server, I will get an error because I don't have Python installed in this environment. So what we want to install in this environment is going to be our open source Azure MCP server. Now, real quick before I do that, let's jump over to our GitHub Copilot. And we are gonna to wanna to make sure we're in agent mode by using this toggle in the bottom right, I'm gonna select agent mode. And one thing I wanna point out here is this tools icon. If I click this, it is gonna list all the available MCP servers slash tools that we have available to us in this environment. And we see here that we have our Azure tools, which correspond to our GitHub Copilot for Azure uh, extension that we have installed. So we have all these here. And let's just go ahead and ask it a question. Let's say, list all my Azure storage accounts. And let's see what it comes back with. 
and here it wants to run a command. It's going to generate a, a CLI command. And if I expand open this run here, you'll see what it's doing in more detail. And I can say continue. You can also select different options here. So like allow always and stuff like that. I'm just going to say continue so that we can see each step in this process. And here it's going to go ahead and generate a CLI command that I could use to then list my storage accounts. So let's see after we install the Azure MCP server, what our experience is like here. So I'm going to jump over to this blog post that outlines the Azure MCP server. Remember, this approach is the same for any MCP server, not just this Azure MCP server. And this talks about the different components of this server here. I'm going to just jump right to its GitHub repository. And here, this is open source, so we can see all the code here. And here it is going to outline all the things you can do with this Azure MCP server. Uh, storage account, Cosmo DB, a whole bunch of other support. Now this is in public preview, so keep in mind that this can change over time. So of course you can use this in other components other than VS Code, such as Cursor AI or other AI-centric coding engines. But this has pre-built buttons right here for VS Code to make it super easy to install. I can simply come here and say, install Azure MCP server. It's gonna jump us back to our VS Code. And then I simply say, install server. And it's going to automatically put the configuration elements for us right inside that settings.json file. This way we can take a look at it. And then to get it started, I can simply click start here. Or again, control shift P, go to list MCP servers. We now see that in our list. We're going to select that and then say start server. And just like that, it's going to start our Azure MCP server. Now this is code running locally that is going to communicate with Azure components in the cloud. So the local component here of our MCP server is going to facilitate that communication. Now that I've installed that MCP server, let's go ahead and see what results we get from our GitHub Copilot this time. I've went ahead and just started a new chat here. One thing I want to point out is this tools icon now says 51. So in addition to the GitHub Copilot for Azure components, we will now see our components here for MCP server, uh, Azure MCP server. These are all the tools that are now available to us. So let's ask that question again. List all the storage accounts in Azure. And it's going to be scoped to my subscription that I have set up in my VS Code. And here again, it's going to first do like we saw before. It's going to do that call to the Azure best practices. So this time, instead of presenting us a command to execute, it says, hey, I can run a tool and get this answer for you. It's saying I can run azmcp-storage-account-list, and we can expand this open and see the exact command that it's going to execute there. And I'm going to simply say continue. So this is going to go out and query and see what we have in our subscription. So now I ran that, and it says it does have some uh, problem accessing my default subscription. So let's do this. Let's set Azure default subscription, and let's see how this works. Now, when I ran this earlier to test this demo, I went ahead and did not have this problem. So this kind of shows the dynamic nature of when you're working with these co-pilots. And it's got my cache plan here. And would I like to set that as my default subscription? I'm going to say yes. And now it's going to go about and open my subscription picker. I'm going to go ahead and set that. Okay, and now let's go ahead and now it says, hey, do I want to run that command again? And sure enough, let's go ahead and run that command again. And let's see what it comes back with this time. Okay, sure enough, sure enough, it came back and it has one storage account that is found there. We can go a little bit further and say list containers. And really what I want to show here is that the results that you get running these commands with this Azure MCP server are very different than the default results with just the GitHub Copilot. We get much more detail into that um, container and the storage account and the components that are in there. And you can go ahead and look and see I heard it lists the single container name that exists in that storage account. So with this, we saw how simple it was to add an MCP server and give more tooling to our GitHub Copilot inside of VS Code. Now, some of the other MCP servers that I like, there's a file component one to access the file system. And then there's one called Context7. 
Context 7 provides uh, up-to-date information about uh, documentation. So if you're working with something like Azure MCP Server, which is very new, you can use Context 7 to help pull in updated documentation. So I'd recommend looking at that. So if you want to see other MCP servers that are out there, one of the best places, and I'll put a link to it below, is the GitHub MCP repository here, the official GitHub repository. And it's gonna list some reference servers here. Like I said, here's the file system one that I tend to like. A lot of people rave over the Brave search that adds just additional search components to your agents. Then there's a bunch of third-party tools here as well. And installing all these is exactly the same as we saw setting up the MCP server. Um, you just have to do make sure you do have any prerequisites installed for that. So, but the one thing I do want to point out is, as I did find it a little tricky, and as we saw here, even during this live demo, that it didn't exactly work exactly as I'd ran it literally just 15 minutes ago. It uh, behaved totally different. So that's kind of the nature of AI and these agents is that it's not going to be the same outcome every time. So obviously this time I went through some sort of different code path that said, hey, it didn't know what my default subscription was. So once I set that, I probably shouldn't have that problem again. It's going to put that, probably I think it goes in the settings of JSON file, and it's going to have that next time for reference. So that's kind of the same experience I've had when working with this file system, MCP server, and even the Context 7 one is definitely very different results from one time to another. And a little bit more unpredictable than I've seen with some of the chat-based models that I've worked with. So just kind of keep that in mind that when you are working with the GitHub Copilot and some of these MCP servers, it might take a couple iterations and a little bit of learning on your side as to fully optimize those. So with that, thank you for taking a look at this video. If you have any questions, please post it below. And if you like this content and want to see more, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.